Ahoy, I'm Captain Lawrence Yufa. On the last episode of Captain's Log, we discussed the Hittites, the Battle of Kadesh, and Pharaoh Ramses II. After the battle, tensions in other parts of the area rose and made way for the Libyan War. The involvement of the pirates is seldom mentioned, but they were a very real force. Before we get into it, we need to discuss the Lucans. They were pirates that ruled the Mediterranean for quite a while. There are mentions of this in many historical documents of the era. The Lucans were based on the coast of Lycia in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, and they developed a reputation as sea raiders because of their piratical acts. They raided places like Cyprus and Ugarit. They were the very first pirates, but all that was before the Battle of Kadesh. I decided to skip over it because there wasn't enough information on those raids to make a full video. But it should be known that the Luka were a very serious threat and put a lot of pressure on surrounding nations. After the Battle of Kadesh, the Luka slowly disappear from history and become less of a threat on the seas. But the sea people start popping up way more. In fact, this leads a lot of scholars to believe that the Luka actually integrated and became part of the sea peoples. No matter who won the Battle of Kadesh, Pharaoh Ramses II was able to divert Egypt's resources to deal with the Lucans. Some 60 to 65 years after the Battle of Kadesh, Egypt was faced with another serious threat. Merneptah ascended to the throne in the latter half of his life, and in his fifth year as Pharaoh, he was met with a massive attack by the Libyans and their allies coming from the western desert. Inscriptions at Karnak describe the campaign. When the Pharaoh first heard about the attack, it was said that he was enraged, like a lion. He assembled his court and gave a rousing speech. Later, he dreamed that he saw the Egyptian god Ta handing him a sword and saying, Take thou it, and banish thou the fearful heart from thee. When the bowmen went forth, it was said that the god Amun was with them as a shield. Mariri, the Libyan king, brought his entire family, his treasure, and his beasts. For this was no mere raid for loot, this was an invasion with the sole purpose of settling down in a place that seemed flawless. The Libyan attack failed, and after a hard-fought six-hour battle in the desert, the pharaoh boasted. The wretched chief of Libya, his heart was paralyzed with fear. It shrank. He stopped and knelt down, leaving his bow and quiver and sandals on the ground behind him. The huge spoils of this battle included silver, gold, weapons, furniture, cattle, and goats. Merneptah states that he defeated the invasion, killing 6,000 soldiers and taking 9,000 prisoners. To be sure of the numbers, he took the penises of all of the uncircumcised enemy soldiers and the hands of all the circumcised. So yeah, that's history for you. The Libyans were not the only ones fighting in this battle, though. Their allies included many of the tribes of the Sea Peoples, including the infamous Lucans. The next battle we will discuss will be the first great sea battle that we can reasonably call piracy. But the last two battles set the stage for this inevitable battle. Till next time, fair winds, for we may never meet here again.